just a little farther. I can't see. Is the baby okay? Girl's fine. Oh, this better be good. It's good. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Mm-hmm. Welcome to Cypress Woods. What do you think? Oh, Paul, it's amazing. Yeah? Yes! I never doubted you'd have an amazing life, Paul. But no amount of money can buy happiness. I want to show you something. you happy for the rest of your life. Paul, I adore you. I love you, but this life, without sin, I, I want... Bo. You want Bo. Bo has moved on. He's in Paris, and Giselle tells me he's engaged to a rich, glamorous heiress, so that's that. Paul, you know why we can't be married. Ruby, I love you more than I've loved anyone in the world. Oh, stop it. You shouldn't have to live in that shack. You're really going to make me say it out loud? And, and raise Pearl in destitution? We are brother and sister. For God's sake. Half. We're only half. Brother. We're in love. Madly in love before we knew any of this. You can't deny that. I can't. We can't ignore the truth. Or the sin. I have a way. Separate suites. Right? We won't share a bed. We'll live side by side, but not together. Paul, you deserve a real marriage. You deserve passion in your life. We both do. I'm willing to give all of that up to be beside you always. I don't know if I'm passionately in love. Okay. Well, then, if either of us desires to find that ecstasy with someone else, we won't stand in each other's way. Really? H however would that work? Why don't we at least give it a chance? Let's do it for Pearl, for her future. That's dirty pool, Paul T. You leave that bundle of joy out of this. She'll have the best of the best here. All right, a, a deluxe nursery with loving childcare so you can do your painting. We'll tell the world that she's ours. Do that. He doesn't know she exists. You know what he thinks happened. Well, you didn't go through with it, did you? Now you have an amazing little girl. I want to help you raise her. I wish I could just tell your father everything. We could get married and live as a real family. Isn't he handsome? He's a wonderful man, but he has a way about him, but He's also got this wicked sense of humor, and he always knew how to make me laugh. He lives in Paris, France. It's such a romantic place. I know, not like here. But if he were here now, it might even make this little shack seem romantic. Ruby Landry, in the flat. Yeah, I've been in the swamp in some time, missy. There's no phone lines out this way. Buster Treha. A thousand bucks, and he said I could marry you. But I get to try the merchandise first. I had no part in that agreement. You making babies without me? Don't, 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 please, don't! No! 
don't hurt her. Please. Best to don't hurt babies. Best to make these babies. Now, put her down. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. Thing is, I kind of prefer the hard way. Like wrestling an alligator. Welcome to your new home, Pearl and Ruby Tate. so much more than we could have imagined. I should be thanking you for the company. Why not? <laughs> I say we toast to our life whenever and however we can. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> well, I guess this is good night. <clears throat> hey, you, you look really stunning tonight. You're not so bad yourself, mister. <laughs> It's not our fault we feel this way, but it is a sin. We have to resist. Can I? No. I'm sorry. Good night, Ruby. I love you. I feel the same way, Paul. Mrs. Tate next to Paul. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Tate. My goodness. You really are the spitting image of your mother. And she was an enchantress, you know. If you say so. Ruby, my wife. Well, she's terrified that your marriage will expose the truth that your half-brother and sister. That Paul is not her son. If you could keep the illusion alive, it would mean a great deal. Our daughter, Jean, she doesn't know. Of course. Thank you. All right, ready to go? Uh, um, <clears throat> all clear. Wow. Another stunning outfit for Mrs. Ruby Tate. Uh, wow. Ruby Tate can afford a lot more than Ruby Landry could. Oh, sometimes I wish I could just become someone else. Yeah, yeah if only it were that easy. Okay, uh, so remember, there's a sensitive information about my family that Jean doesn't know. Oh, about. you mean that your father and my mother had a secret fling and we're a married half brother and sister? You know, when you say it like that, something for each other. Congratulations to the happy couple. Oh, I wish you two hadn't eloped. Where's the baby? She's upstairs with the nanny. You hired a nanny to raise your daughter? Well, she's very nice and very experienced with babies. And that way, uh, Ruby can focus on, on her painting for some of the day, huh? 
that is so wonderful that you get to focus on your art. And I'm sure the time that you spend with Pearl is real quality time. Yes, that's exactly right. It's a good situation for all of us. If you say so. I just love spending every moment with my son and beautiful daughter when they were little. To decorate. Oh, you were, were you? Paul says you have a great eye, Mrs. Tate. Maybe after dinner we could take a walk around. Yes, that would be lovely. <laughs> I was thinking maybe pale blue. Why did you do it? Why did you marry Paul when you knew the truth? Mrs. Tate, Paul and I have always been close. It crushed us utterly when we learned the truth. How do you think it was for me? Your mother put a spell on my husband all those years ago and made my husband's secret my own. I had to pretend to be pregnant and lie to everyone I have ever known, including my own daughter. Now Paul must raise another man's child and I must pretend with a new baby so the family isn't a public disgrace. I promise. I won't tell a soul about the true circumstances. Of course you won't. Look at all you have to lose. Deep down, I will never do anything to interfere with that. Paul loves Pearl with all his heart as if she were his own. And I hope you will accept that and love her as much as a grown mare should. Love. Everyone needs so much of it. No wonder we're all exhausted. Good night, Ruby. It's been such a pleasure to spend the evening with you. I don't know about you, Pearl. But I can barely remember that old... My girls? <gasps> They're beautiful. Like the woman who planted them. Other people planted them for me. Well, you made this, you made this place a real home. I mean, your loving attention to detail really shows. Thank you, honey. That's so nice. Well, that's the truth. You really are something. You know that? Oh my God. Found here? After all, it is my specialty. <laughs> my dear, darling twin sister, mistress of Cypress Woods. I have to admit, you haven't done too bad for a Cajun swamp girl. <laughs> now, are we gonna stand out here all day or are you gonna show me around? I, I actually have to get to work, but uh, you two ladies have fun. You, we'll take tea in the parlor. I assume this place has one. Does the swampy smell ever go away, or do you just get used to it? I'd rather live here than the Dumas mansion. Any Daphne is mellowing out as she crumbles into old age. Do you ever have anything genuinely nice to say about someone? Yes, actually. Your husband. Paul is a saint. What's it like being married to our brother so you can spend his money and live in his mansion? He is our half-brother. If you've just come here to make trouble. Well, keep your secrets, Ruby, and take to heart how grateful you are. You. <laughs> I mean, one teeny tiny leak to the public and you might lose all of this. What do you want? Money. <laughs> I might not be an oil millionaire, but I don't need money. I just like knowing I'm clear to me, don't you? The shoe fits, Rubes. Oh, you're supposed baby. Giselle, I just told you I'm good at keeping secrets, Ruby. Calm down. Why don't you take a few hours off? She has Bo's eyes. I know. They're beautiful. Oh, so you do still have Bo on the brain after all this? I do not. 
doesn't mean his baby's eyes aren't beautiful. <laughs> Whatever you say, sister. You wanna? <gasps> Disgusting! Your little love child just ruined my outfit. Okay. Oh. Careful with my handbag. Costs more than you make in a month. Leaving so soon? Well, my sister doesn't seem too keen on playing host. Oh, I'm so sorry to see you go. Pearl's upstairs napping, but she wishes she could say goodbye. By the way, Bo broke off his engagement to his Parisian debutante. He didn't get married? Nope. In fact, he's back, living in New Orleans, and we're planning on getting together next week. You know, if you had just waited a little bit longer before diving into all of this, you might have still won him and had it all. Don't worry. I'll tell him all about your luxurious life, your amazing, happy marriage, your new noodle little baby when I see him, and his eyes, those beautiful eyes. If you think I'm jealous of your life because of this big house and all of your money, you've got another thing coming. I've got a feeling you'll be envious of my life soon. Just you wait. Hi. Why does Giselle have to be so awful? Sometimes I really hate her. She's jealous. I mean, you're everything she's not. Caring, thoughtful, kind. You are a hundred times more beautiful than she'll ever be because of the goodness inside you. Pardon me, madame. Colonel William Henry Tate, at your service. <laughs> Paul, that's so funny. I'm not aware of a man by the name of Paul. I'm Colonel William Henry Tate. <clears throat> it would be my pleasure to join you. I'm thrilled to hear, madame. In fact, I have acquired a special gown for the occasion. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I shall relish the opportunity, Colonel. This is all a bit silly. Once again, madame, it's William. A toast, madame, to the return of better times, when the most important thing for a man to do is make the woman of his heart happy. This night is truly magical. Thank you, William.
What are your plans for the day? Painting. Oh, wonderful. Paul, we have to talk. Thank you. Paul, I know what you're trying to do, but we violated our promises to each other last night. What do you mean? I just told you I was out quickly last night. <laughs> Did you have some kind of dream? Please. I'm sure it was just a dream. Just a dream. Yes? Ruby. Giselle, hi. What do you want? I don't want anything, but I thought you'd like to know what's happened. Our lovely stepmother was out riding when her horse spooked and threw her off. She hit her head on a rock. It was hours before someone found her. She's dead, Ruby. Thanks for coming. Oh, it's awful. I'm devastated. Well, we sure are sorry for your loss, Bruce. That bitch locked me out of her will entirely. I'm gonna be destitute. What am I going to do? You always said you married Daphne for love, not her money. You try living without it. Sorry, Bruce. We have to find Giselle. Please. Just talk some sense into her about your mother's will. As far as I'm concerned, Giselle can handle Bruce. <laughs> I don't even... Oh. Hi, Ruby. I didn't see you there. But isn't it wonderful to see Beau? Beau by name and by nature. Handsome as ever and all mine now. <laughs> Hi, Ruby. It's nice to see you. Hi. Hello, Beau. Paul. Paul Tate. Beau Andres. Pleasure. What are you doing here? He's been such a support through this difficult time as I recover from the death of our stepmother. After my visit to you, I met up with our beautiful beau, and well, you might have stolen. Isn't it nice to see the happy married couple, honey? And you should just see their beautiful baby girl, Pearl. Yes, uh, congratulations on your marriage. Sounds like two of you are very happy. I think I left something in the car. I just, um, I just need a moment alone. Okay. I'm sorry. I should have told you. It's okay. It's just a shock. I have to ask. How's Pearl? That's her name, right? Yes. And she's wonderful. Cuddly, sweet, curious. Sounds like her mother. Bo. Don't. My mother had gone off to Europe. Can you ever forgive me for leaving you like that? Of course I forgive you. Don't hold on to that guilt. I ran off to have Pearl so you wouldn't be burdened. We've managed to make a wonderful life together. With Paul? Yes. He's a wonderful man. Well, I'm happy the two of you are so happy. And that Pearl be raised in a respectable way. Did you not have a fantastic time in Europe? It sounded like a dream. What happened with your Parisian heiress? I wake up every morning and look at my beautiful fiance and still feel empty inside. Because she wasn't you. 
So I broke it off with her and I moved back fully intending to tell you my feelings. But Giselle told me you'd married Paul and had a baby, his baby. I was crushed, but I wanted you to be happy, so I stayed away. I didn't know Pearl was mine until now. You didn't want to know. And now you're with Giselle. There you are, honey. I've been looking everywhere for you. We don't want to mess that up now, would we? Let's go, darling. Have we enough guests. Letter for you, madame. It's from your sister. <sighs> Thank you. After our honeymoon, we'll come visit and settle Daphne's estate. Gotta go. My beau's calling me back to bed. Ciao for now. Incredible place. Giselle, you really didn't do it justice. Gardens can be so much work. Well, it's our little corner of the world. Make sure Bruce doesn't get that money. Shouldn't be more than a few hours to settle Daphne's estate and make sure we're all on the same page. And who is this little one? Hello, darling. Come here. Oh. Bo? Meet Pearl. Hello there, Pearl. I'm Bo. Can we go inside now? The swamp smell makes me gag. <sighs> to Paul and his success, you might learn something. Or at the very least, butter him up to help make sure we come out of this better off. I don't want to give Ruby the satisfaction of getting the better end of the deal. It's time for your nap, my darling. <gasps> sweet dreams, my sweetest. Now that I have it so clear, you, Pearl, and me, we should be a family. We are a family. Uh, we are both married to other people. It's, it's too late. I can't just keep going on pretending my heart isn't exploding every time I see you. The only reason I married Giselle was for the illusion that it's you. Ruby, I've done something crazy. I've leased an apartment in the French Quarter that Giselle doesn't know about. I want you to visit me there, if you want to. Deep down, you know we were meant to be together. And if fate won't let us do a bra, think about it. Bo, where are you? I love you, Ruby. I'll run circles around you. I mean, I know you're not the brightest bulb in the chandelier, but you always surprise me with new ways of proving it. Well, it was very nice to see both of you. Thank you so much for the tour. Would love to stay for dinner, sis, but we just got a new bed, so. May I? Think about it. Leave some room for Jesus. Get in the car and drive me home. Bye, 
honey. Have a good trip. Oh, thanks, sweetie. Oh, and I was thinking I might take your advice. Maybe set up a few meetings with art dealers in New Orleans. That's terrific. I've been saying it forever. You're going to be a famous artist. I'm afraid I can't live without this. This place can be just for us, hidden away from the real world. I'm gonna have to head back soon. I hate lying to Paul, but we made an agreement when we got married. To let each other explore. You don't already have physical passion with your husband? Paul's father and my mother had a secret affair a long time ago. Paul is the result. Rather than face the shame, Paul's father asked his wife Gladys to raise Paul as her own. Paul is my half-brother. I never be more than platonic. This changes everything. You made an agreement. But I don't think Paul really meant it. He loves me so much. And it kills me to picture his face when I tell him the truth, but... I must. me. Where is everyone? Where's Pearl? I give everyone the day off. I needed the quiet. Pearl's napping. I know what you did. I know what you said! We had an agreement, Paul. A an agreement you suggested. I didn't think you had every right to do what we agreed. Please, 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 please. Don't see him again. You mean the world to me. And if you see him again, you leave me. Hold on now. 
Y you and Paul had an agreement. True. But what if Giselle finds out? That is what makes this untimely. For him and his family. And she knows it. It has to be over. Good morning to the most amazing woman in the world. Sorry, she's gone for the day. It's just me, Ruby. What can I do to help you feel better? Name it, I'll, I'll buy it. I just need time. Okay. Well, if you think of anything, just call. Your brother-in-law, he insisted. It sounds troubled. Hello? Ruby. Something's happened. Which has always bitten my mosquito and she fell ill. I called the doctor to the chateau and he said the mosquito could be carrying a rare form of encephalitis and passed it to her. Oh my god. She's in a coma. It could be permanent. No. Fate is trying to help us. Come to the chateau and switch places with Giselle. You look so much alike, no one will ever question it. Ruby will be the one who fell ill, and you can assume Giselle's life. With me. You can bring Pearl, and we can... All live together as a family. Oh. I've already laid some of the groundwork with the doctor here. He'll take money in exchange for silence, and if we pull the switch fast enough, none of the staff will ever know. You've really thought this through. If we're gonna do this without suspicion, suspicion, you need to decide today. Living this half-life isn't working. And... Now fate has stepped in with Giselle's illness. Giselle here? I'll take care of her as if my wife, Ruby, got sick. I'll send Pearl off with her Aunt Giselle and Uncle Beau until her mom gets better. Can't believe you're willing to go along with this. Honestly, seeing you so miserable has made me miserable. Ashamed. We had an agreement was my idea. I'm a man of my word. Really? Maybe all I ever wanted to do was make you happy. Be getting her the best care. She might even recover, you know. We have to switch wedding rings. It's the only piece of jewelry people will notice. I get even an inkling that you mistreated her. I will blow this whole charade up in an instant. You know, Pearl? This used to be my room when I lived here. Yeah, feels familiar. That's important these days. My gorgeous daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to your new life, Mrs. Andres. The life that was meant to be. <laughs> Hi, Pauline. 
I'm not sure. Let me... This is as good a time as any. Hello? Hi, Pauline. Well, it was a disaster, that's why. My sister came to visit, and she was bitten by a mosquito. She came down with this stupid, rare disease. So we had to come home, and I had to take my niece. Well, maybe you don't know everything about me, Pauline. I can be good with kids if I want to be. No, I don't have time for tennis. And to be honest, your backhand wasn't anything to boast about. He asked if we'll be at Kitty's private party at Fancy's on the weekend. Well, I think it's time to rip the bandage off. Introduce you to society. Oh, I'm really gonna have to get used to showing this much skin. Giselle will like to walk into a room and have every head turn her way. I'll be blushing so hard, everyone will know it's me. People just think it's Giselle's way of flirting. Plus, you look spectacular. When in doubt, be mean. Giselle, so good to see you. Cynthia, hello. It's been too long. <laughs> For you, maybe. Hi. <laughs> Bo, I'm thirsty. Let's grab a drink. But first, I need to go to the little girl's room. Giselle, baby. You're back in town and you didn't call me? I didn't know we were close to Matt. Well, uh, you thought wrong, I guess. What's wrong with you, baby? Are you insane? Bo is just out there. I thought that was part of the fun. Well, I intend to get my fun in other ways from now on. Now, I'll tell you the truth just this once. You are no longer worth my time. So get out of my life. And by the way, that cologne... I'm just fine for myself. No thanks to you and people of your ilk. Let me get this straight based on what I've seen tonight. You somehow stole Bo, the love of your sister's life. Then Maybe you should get your own business. I mean, mind your own life. I, I, I'm sorry, Abby. I... Ruby? Abby, is it so obvious? You can't hide your heart, Ruby. But why on earth are you pretending to be Giselle? It's a long story. I'd really rather not get into it right now. I trust you have your reasons. Your secret's safe with me. Thank you, Abby. It's truly wonderful to bump into you like this. It feels so good to have someone see who I really am. Someone to talk to. I'd like that, Abby. I'd like that very much. It's oh, <laughs> so good to see you. Hello? Uh, it's Paul. Ruby there? Yeah, one second. It's Paul. Paul? Ruby, how are you? I, I miss you. Um, how is Giselle? Well, I've been, uh, getting her looked at by different specialists. Well, Paul, that's great. Thank you for taking such good care of her. Actually, she can come out of the coma. That sounds like great news. Keep us updated. That was rude, Bo. You just hung up. Well, he says he wants you to be happy. He should let you be happy. I love you. I can't shake this feeling that something's gonna take you away from me and separate us all again. Well, my mother's returning from a trip overseas and she expects to see Giselle and me. It's not gonna be easy to face her, I, I know. Giselle wasn't fond of my mother, so you don't have to say much. We see her often. But... So, Giselle. 
Bo tells me you've been watching that Cajun baby for a while since your sister fell ill. She's not a nameless Cajun baby. Her name is Pearl. Oh, so you've really taken a shine to little Pearl then. Uh, I didn't say that. I don't like her very much, and I wish I'd never committed to this whole anti-steps in thing, but <laughs> I'll be damned if anyone tells me I can't take care of a simple infant. Hmm. It's my own fault for being too nice. <laughs> and the father, Paul Tate, he's become very wealthy, I hear. Yes, Paul made my... I'm certainly hoping for a grandson. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, keep hoping, because if all children are like my sisters, I'll check myself into a nunnery before I carry a baby to term. <laughs> yep, that Cajun baby is the closest thing you'll ever have to progeny, so get used to it. You really let my mother have it. It was as if Giselle crawled up inside of me to make that remark. <laughs> I couldn't control it. It was surging through me. Well, it worked. She didn't suspect a thing. As far as she's concerned, you are Giselle. I know who you are. Ruby? Ruby? Paul? Is everything okay? You sound different. Turns out all those fancy, expensive doctors were wrong. The test came back and Giselle's prognosis is even worse. Oh no, I'm so sorry to hear that. Are you? I, I, I mean, do you know that even if she survives, she'll have permanent brain damage? Do you remember when we were kids? You went to see that voodoo queen? Yeah, to conjure up some nasty spell. After. Yeah, well, I guess it's still working. I'm happy for you, too. Really am. Paul. I have to go now. He sounded so strange. Not like the man I know. He thought he could cure Giselle and bring you back. I think we should visit Cypress Woods soon. Monsieur and Madame Andreas. Any new developments, Jean? They, uh, checked Ruby into the hound all day. We're all really worried about him. Especially my mother. Jean, it's not polite to talk about your host like that. She's just making sure you're okay. I'm fine. Oh, just accepting my fate, as if you know anything about that. I'm suddenly not feeling well in my office. I wanted to check in on you. You should see how small she's getting, Giselle. She is wilting away. Like a flower. Ruby, you don't have to pretend. We're always jealous of the love that Ruby and I had. Paul, I'm not Giselle. You know, jealousy is a terrible thing. Because it rots you away from the inside. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see, Giselle. You'll see. Please stop talking like this. Go. Go. Go, go back to your life of pleasure and your, your dashing husband. Go. Isn't he lucky? Now he doesn't have a wife on her deathbed. I'm sorry we could never be real twins. And we had the greatest gift in the world, and we took it for granted. I'll always regret that. This is a pouch of five-fingered grass that Nina Jackson gave to me to ward off evil. You remember her? Papa's favorite cook. This It's not much, but... That's all I have right now. Other than
and money. I see it now. I'm in your shoes. The world was a great playground to you. And anything that threatened it was to be destroyed. And how easy is it to just enjoy life and toss off a calloused remark? It feels powerful. Whereas me, I other people to help me. And now, treating people as you do, it makes me feel in charge. And I'm scared. <laughs> because I'm getting really good at it. I'm starting to like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweetie, do you really think we befriended you? Certainly didn't marry Beau for his brains or good business sense, so clearly we'll never be able to afford one. <sighs> yes. <laughs> Honey, I'm sorry about the joke about your brains last night. I got carried away with my Giselle act. There are points in the conversation where even I couldn't tell the difference. Where are you going? I want to call Paul. Doing? He's been getting worse and worse, Giselle. He's even started sleeping in your grandma's shack. Saying it reminds him of when he and Ruby were younger. That's so unfair. They were the most perfect couple in the world. Two people living fantasy romance. Yeah, well, maybe it was a fantasy. Giselle. Bruce, how on earth did you get in? Well, I lived here for years. Use those same skills to find your way out. I'm not going anywhere till I get what I deserve. That will was not fair, and I deserve my share of the family fortune, and you're going to give it to me. There's nothing in the world you can say to make me give you even one penny of that money. Wait a minute. Did you do this? Because only Ruby could do something like that. You're Ruby. Bruce, you're drunk. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yes, I Because once I start pulling at threads, something's going to unravel. You're not going to say a word. Because I know enough about all of your back alley deals and the crap you pull when you're the Dumas family fixer to discredit you up and down the state. And if I really need to, I know you and Giselle once messed around while my father was dying. And what's that gonna look like to polite society? A creepy old man making an advance on his sweet little underage future stepdaughter? That's not true. Yes, it is. You've always been inappropriate towards me and Giselle. No. And you can't prove any of that. Well, I... That's what I thought. Now get out of my house. I have company coming, and I don't want you here when they arrive. I'm just worried about who I'm becoming. There is power in Giselle's assertiveness that feels good, but it also feels ugly. Well, the fact that you're worried about it tells me you'll never become Giselle. You'll always be that kind-hearted Ruby on the inside. Will I, though? I mean, today, with Bruce, Giselle just took over and it felt right with that statement. So have you, my friend. Excuse me. Ruby is dead. 
Ruby's dead. Yes, she she died this afternoon. Paul was there, holding her hand as she went. Oh my God, Jean, this is awful. Paul has requested that you not bring Pearl to the funeral. If you didn't bother coming at all. <gasps> It's me who died. I just couldn't bear the sadness and anger in Jane's voice. And then they said, if you come at all, of course we're coming to the funeral. We're not monsters. Oh my God. I am going to my own funeral. So sorry for your loss, Madame Giselle. Your sister was a wondrous... In a way, he is. Now, oh, Ruby. My sweetest sunshine. I miss you. That's my true love. Never know another like Ruby Lantry. She's good. It's over. shadow of himself. I don't know if he'll ever come back to us. I don't know what you want me to do about it. Oh, stop pretending. I know what you and your lover did. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I always knew that you would just joy Paul. Ruby. Maybe my husband, Bo and I, could help Paul get back on his feet. You didn't know. That I know why my son is so brokenhearted. And I will not sit by and let him suffer without you suffering twice as much. Paul's missing. What? He's gone. Where? I don't know. He just ran off. He was talking crazy about how he couldn't live without Ruby. Where did he go? We have to stop him. I don't know. I don't know. This way. How do you know about this place? Somehow it's the only thing I ever remember that she said. Have some respect for the dead, Giselle. I'm sorry. That was uncalled for. Shall we? Ruby. Honey, come back! It's okay. 
Dziecko. Are you okay? No. Fair enough. I just wanted to let you know that a special little someone's here and wants to say hello. Well, thank you, sweet Pearl. I really needed to see her smile today. <laughs> you know, all I ever wanted was for you to have a better life than I had. Baby girl. What on earth is it? How dare you disturb me like this? Sorry, ma'am. There's a young woman at the door for you. I'll be down in a minute. As you wish. Go back to Daddy Pearl. Jean. Hi. What are you doing here? My parents asked me to deliver this news to you in person, Giselle. First, we would prefer if you did not attend Paul's funeral. Second, Paul and Ruby's daughter belongs with her grandpere and grandmare, not her self-centered aunt. Of pleasure and not worry. Oh, that's okay. I'm sort of getting used to it. And so is Pearl, it seems. She thinks I'm her mama. <laughs> hmm. And yet you are not her mother. Mrs. Giselle Andreas, I represent Octavius and Gladys Tate. They have filed a custody lawsuit, and the judge has issued a court order saying that we will take your niece, Pearl Tate, with us back to her grandparents. <laughs> There's been some sort of misunderstanding. I'm afraid not, and I can't leave without the child. And we are prepared to charge you with obstruction if you choose not to cooperate. Ultimately, the courts will decide, but until then, Pearl will be in the custody of her grandparents. Slow down. They're claiming custody of Pearl. They filed a court order. Come to get her. This is what Gladys meant by making Ruby suffer twice as much as Paul. She's seeking vengeance. It'll be all right. We can figure it out. They can't take our baby away from us. Please, don't do this. Mrs. Andreas, don't make this harder or more traumatic than it needs to be. Especially for the child. get you back. Giselle and I switch places, you know, to hell with what everyone thinks. We have to be strategic about this. Oh, oh I am tired of lying. You know, I said a long time ago that the most important thing was to live a good life, to be honest and always do the right thing, but look at what I've become. I only recognize myself when I look in my baby's eyes. So I'm gonna get back to being who I really am. And I'm gonna start by telling the truth. I switch places with Giselle to be with the man I love. If we can prove that you're Ruby, then Bo can testify to being the father of the child. Of course. And yet you say there are no birth certificates or medical records of your birth or your sister's? I'm afraid not. My sister and I were born in swamp country. No doctors, no hospitals, which means no paperwork or birth certificates. I hear there's something called DNA technology which will be able to clear this up with a simple blood test one day. But we're years away from that. Handwriting sample? Their penmanship's clearly different. That's hardly conclusive. What about the doctor who originally treated... And he disappeared west. 
Uh huh. Very well. The staff at the ranch or the Dumas mansion? None of them knew what was happening. We were very careful. So the Tates believe that they buried Ruby Tate and there was a death certificate issued in your name. Yes. I can't believe we did so much to convince the world I was Giselle and we did it so well that now no one will believe the truth. This may end up being your word against the Tates and we'll do our best to tell your story as sympathetically as we can, but this will be assigned to a Bayou court with a Bayou judge. So we we're prepared for that, as long as it means we can get Pearl back. If you really want my advice, I say you should go over to the Tates and do whatever is necessary to avoid this trial. Mrs. Tate, as one mother to another, I beg if you please let this matter go. I am doing what is best for this baby. That child does not belong with a pair of pathological liars. For better or for worse, your son offered to make a home for Ruby and Pearl. It was for worse. Look at where he is now. I... In fact, when Paul saw the love between Ruby and I, he agreed to help us have a real shot at being a family. <laughs> if this is about the money, we can sign over anything we might stand to gain from it. You think I'm worried about money? My son is dead because of you. Get out of my house and out of our lives. You put your sister's face on and you crawled into her skin. Now, live there. Andreas versus Tate, custody trial of Pearl Tate. Counselor, do you have an opening statement? Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to leave that statement for my client, Miss Ruby Tate. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Please be seated. So you are telling this court under oath that Paul Tate married you, took in someone else's child, provided you and her with an unbelievably lavish lifestyle. And then when you committed adultery right under his nose in Baton Eye, her daily care lied to his entire family, saying that you were her. And then when she, I mean, you, passed away, he became so distraught that he took his own life. This is the story that you expect us to believe. I, I. No more questions, Your Honor. The court will take a brief recess. Gladys, tell us about your relationship with Ruby and Paul. I just adored them to um, help decorate her and Paul's beautiful home. I can't possibly imagine Paul doing the things they're, they're saying that he did. You know, she said earlier that, that names are just a formality. But I was there when my Paul collapsed with grief, desperately calling out, Ruby, my sweet Ruby, Ruby, as if it would bring her back. I'll never shake the horror that day, not as long as I live. Andrew, we buried that day. That is her sister, Giselle. 
That is not Pearl's mother. Thank you, Gladys. I know that was really hard for you. Your witness. Your Honor, we'd like to request a recess. Very well. I wish I could just tell them I know you, Ruby, because I can see your heart. Keep being yourself. Keep telling the whole truth. No one can hide from who they are and what they've done in the end. The whole truth. Haven't we already told the truth? Not everybody has. <sighs> Call Octavia Tate. Excuse me? He knows the truth. I'll write down exactly what to ask. This court is back in session. Mr. Polk, are you ready? Yes, if it pleases the court before closing. Please, Your Honor. There's something everyone needs to hear. Uh, we would like to call Octavius Tate to the stand. Well, objection. Process violation. Overruled. I, I want to hear this. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Tate, were you happy when you heard that Paul and Ruby had married? No, I wasn't. You didn't think they made a good couple, was it? There was another reason. Please do what is right, Mr. Tate. Ma'am, do not speak of the witness. Mr. Tate. Yes. There was another reason. Octavius! I am tired of hiding behind a lie. And I cannot separate another mother from her child. Your Honor, you and I came across an enchanting young woman. Though I was Married to Gladys at the time. I gave in to my desires that night. And as a result, my son Paul was born. Your Honor, I have made a mistake that I have had to live with and cover up all these years. The truth is that enchanting young woman my son, Paul Tate, and Ruby Landry were half-brother and sister. My wife and I, we kept up the lie for the sake of propriety, but this, this is not proper. Pearl is not Paul's daughter. Case dismissed. Pearl, no. These things are not for you. 
I've told you, never touch Mommy's stuff. Sorry, Mama, they're just so pretty. Come here, sweet love. What do you think? Does it look like Mommy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello, my lovely ladies. Daddy! <sighs> Mommy, can I rub your belly and say hi to the boys? Sure you can, sweetie. To fate and family. To fate and family. To fate and family.